In this video, I'm going to talk about how to decrypt something that's been encrypted by the affine cipher. Now, there are lots of different assumptions you can start with, one of which would be like a known plain text, which means that you have the um, encrypted message, but you also have a tiny bit of the decrypted message, and you use those things to compare each other and work from there. Now, that usually occurs when um, a message has been intercepted or um, has been stolen or something like that where the person where the person trying to decrypt is not the person the message was intended for. Now in this case we're going to assume the message that you're trying to decrypt was actually intended for you in which case the person who encrypted it gave you the key. So we're going to assume we have the key our alpha comma beta. Uh, for this video. I'm going to show you how to decrypt assuming you have the key. Now if you'll recall, um, for encryption, y equals alpha times x plus beta, where y is the ciphertext, which we have in this case because we're trying to decrypt, and x is the plain text, the, the actual message, which we don't have but we want. So since x is what we want, we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to start with moving the beta over. And now I'm going to divide both sides by alpha. So now we have. Um, however, right now I have an alpha in the denominator and I don't want the alpha to be in the denominator so I'm going to move it up to the numerator and say that the inverse of alpha times y minus beta equals x. Um, I'm going to copy that up here. This right here, that is your formula for decrypting. Okay, so this is our decryption formula. Now I'm going to use this formula to do an example. So we want to decrypt this. This is our ciphertext. Um, notice I wrote it in all caps to prove that it's ciphertext for my own clarification. And this is our key that um, I was given. So first thing we want to do is we want to fill in this formula with the numbers we have. So we were given alpha and beta. So alpha is 7. 7 inverse times y, which we don't have yet. Um, well, these will be our y's, minus what's beta 2 equals x, which is our plain text that we're working on getting. Um, it's important to note that 7 inverse is not the same thing as 7, and it's not the same thing as 1 over 7. So you can't... This is bad, don't do that. You cannot, you cannot do 1 over 7 and get a fraction and a decimal and don't do that. What you have to do is you have to find out what 7 inverse mod 26 is. You have to use a multiplicative inverse um, algorithm called the Euclidean algorithm. There is a link for how to do that in the description below. Um, but for now I'm just going to tell you that uh, 7 inverse mod 26 equals 15. This number right here equals 15. I already did the math for it previously, um, but you will have to learn how to do that if you want to use this. Link below. Alright, so now we fill it in all that we can. Um, next we want to know what the letters are for the ciphertext. Alright, so start with Z. I have my list down here. Um, Z is 25, and then we find E right here is 4, B is 1, 1 again, and W, which is 22. Now these are our ciphertext, it's capital, ciphertext, so these are our Y's. So we can do this um, once for each. 
So we say 15 times, what's our y? Uh, let's start with 25. Uh, minus 2. Um, so that was for our z. And we say that that equals, um, I'll do the math later, but and then we have for our z. For e, we have 15. Substitute the 4 for the e. Um, and for the y equals um, and see how we're just using the same formula for each of them. I only need to do b once because it's going to be the same both times in this um, in this type of cipher. Now that I have worked the math for each of these different letters, you notice that they're kind of all over the place. Um, 345, 30, negative 15, 300. Um, you might also notice that none of these actually correlate with a letter. So what we have to do in each of these cases um, is subtract 26, add or subtract 26, um, again 26 because English alphabet, 26 characters until we get somewhere that actually does represent a letter. And what I mean by that is, um, again, 0 to 25, A to Z. Um, so 345, we subtract 26, subtract 26, subtract 26, and just keep subtracting 26, and eventually you get down to um, 7, uh, which, as you can tell, is in the vicinity of 0 to 25, Therefore, it does actually represent a letter, so that's good for us, making um, this into something actually readable. Now, 30, uh, we only have to subtract 26 once, and you get 4. Um, over here, negative 15. Negative 15. Um, it's already out of the ballpark for positive numbers, so we can add 26 instead. That's okay, too. Uh, we add 26, and we get... This equals 11 when we add 26 to it. Uh, 300, same idea. We just keep subtracting, subtracting, subtracting until we get down to a number that does represent a letter. We get down to 14, I believe. So um, I'm going to go ahead and copy each of these numbers over so I don't forget them. Okay, now that I have obtained the letters for, or excuse me, the numbers um, for each of these letters, remember these were the x's that we obtained. We solved for x, and we got these numbers. Therefore, um, remember x being our plain text, these numbers represent our plain text, our actual message. So, um, z, our original ciphertext, goes to, um, we solved for 7. Uh, where's 7? Here's 7. H. And then we had E, which goes to 4. 4. Um, interestingly enough, it's the same letter, but that happens sometimes. That's okay. Uh, B goes to 11, which is the letter L. And W, so W goes to 14, which goes to O right here. Okay, so we had Z, E, B, B, O. So that is our plain text. That is our original message. We have now decrypted this message using the affine cipher.